Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to High Watch Cycle. Today, I want to tell you that we're starting a series. So this is going to be part one in the video series that we're going to be doing, and we're going to be covering a couple of things out there. Firstly, we're going to be uh, knowing how low sulfur is formed and how we can develop high sulfur. That's what the channel is all about. Then we're going to talk about how do you get over your school trauma and bullying and the stuff that you faced in school. How do you move on from that? Because that's one of the things that makes you feel that you're not good enough, or that makes you feel weak, that makes you feel not strong enough. And you might have noticed that the things that you faced in school or while growing up with your peers are the same patterns that are going on even now and how you can break out of that pattern. Then I'm going to tell you how you can get over your stress and anxiety and overwhelm due to your day to day activities, due to the high performing work that you do, due to the pressure that you have of all of those things. And then after that, we're also going to discuss how you can develop an amazing relationship with your parents. And then finally, how you can get all of these things together and honestly get to a place of healing, get to a place of letting go of all these subconscious anchors and living your life with high self worth. So today's video is part one and today we're going to be talking about how is low self worth formed and what can you do about it? How to get over it to a place of high worth. So firstly for this we need to understand what low self worth is and how that looks. So if any point in time you are out there and you feel that this is something which is not for me, be it anything that you're doing in life, be it when you're trying to earn more money, when you're trying to start a job or when you're trying to apply for a job or when you try to start entrepreneurship or when you feel you've got certain limiting beliefs or barriers around that I cannot earn this much money. Okay. Or at any point in time, you feel that only when I have a lot of money, am I going to be good enough? Only when I get this girl or I get this partner or I fall in love, I'm finally going to feel like I'm a success in life and that I am good enough. At the same time, low self worth could also look like when you want to talk to a particular partner, you feel that that partner is out of your league. You feel that that partner is someone who will never talk to you. And these limiting beliefs could be into a number of other things as well. It could be on your health or the way that you look. You could feel that you're not worthy because of the way you look, the height that you have or because of the weight that you have. So much so that even your skin color is one of the things which makes you feel that you're not good enough. So all of these things are examples of low self worth. Another thing about the way you look is some of you might not accept your body the way you are right now, maybe because you're overweight or maybe because you're not your ideal physical body type that you want to be. And because of that, you might feel that because I'm not jagged or because I'm not thin, because I'm not X, Y, and Z, I am not good enough. That's basically how low self worth looks like. Now in this video, we're going to be covering three reasons how this low self worth is formed or three situations. And number one is going to be your childhood home. The second is going to be your school. And the third is going to be the societal standards and how society pushes it on you. So firstly, at your home. So when a child is born or when we're born, the child has no idea how worthy he is or how non-worthy he is or how he's not good enough. He does not know that he does not deserve the love. He has no idea about if he deserves the money. He has no idea what his height is. He has no idea what skin color he is. He has no idea what body type he is. And if he doesn't deserve the love of his particular person or he doesn't deserve the love of his, of his parents or that because he hasn't come first in his class, he hasn't got that 99 percentile marks or he does not have that amazing corporate job or he hasn't gotten that particular promotion yet, he's not good enough. So naturally speaking, at that point in time, he has no idea about all these things. And as in when we grow up, we start to get all of these ideas through the three main factors which contribute to this low self worth. Again, understanding how the subconscious mind works and understanding how our self identity and our self esteem works. When we're born, because we don't have any idea about all these things, we're basically sponges out there. All right, we're a sponge because a child comes with a fresh mind. A number of his brain activities are not even online at that point in time. So the only thing that's online as soon as we're born is the parts of our brain which tell us that we're hungry and because of that we cry or the parts of the brain which get us to sleep, the parts of the brain which get us to laugh, which get us to poop, which get us to pee. Just these couple of things are online out there. The rest of the things as in when we grow up, for example, the language that we have or the self-esteem that we have or even, you know, walking, all of these things get developed up later on and we start to develop that motor conditioning that hand-eye coordination and number of things as in when we're growing up similarly at the point in time this thing called our core personal belief or our core identity also starts to get formed what that is is that who am i in relation to the world that starts to get formed during that time which could be our identity and our self-esteem our self worth whatever we can call it so now naturally when we're growing up and during that time since we have no idea what's going on we're out here to learn and our parents are the ones who are going to take care of us so naturally at the point in time we believe our parents are gods we believe that they're the best people out there and we do not have any other choice but to believe them because they're the ones who are going to take care of us they are the ones who are going to bathe us who are going to feed us who are going to basically just keep us safe now when we're growing up 
because our parents are unhealed people themselves and they were unhealed children themselves the only way they know that they can discipline us or take care of us is by putting in conditions and that's a conditional love start so conditions such as you are good enough only when xyz conditions such as you are a good boy only when you do this and if you do anything wrong we are punished for that which makes us feel that because this thing i did wrong i am punished for that which means i am a bad person i am not good enough right now because i'm doing all of these mistakes and our self esteem takes a hit our self worth takes a hit because of that some more examples are when our parents want us to do a particular thing like for example if we're crying and they don't want us to cry or if we want to go out and play and they don't want us to do that or if we're not even going to sleep they tell us things like go to sleep otherwise i'll not talk to you or they maybe punish us or they put xyz and other conditions on that or they withdraw their love one thing that happens is the silent treatment that's given maybe the child is crying or maybe the child isn't doing the thing that he's supposed to do so then we're treated with silent treatment which is the parents will not talk to us and they're going to withdraw their love which basically makes a child feel stuck out which basically makes a child feel abandoned and almost like he's going to die so the parents love is super important for him and then he's going to start to conform and behave in the manner that is expected of him and that's where the molding really starts another instance that happens is that if you are explicitly blamed for the wrong things that happen in the house maybe there's a financial crisis happening or maybe someone met with an accident or maybe something bad happened while you were doing a particular thing like mother is doing something in the kitchen and then we're out there making too much noise and something wrong happens in the kitchen maybe something falls maybe your hand gets burned now the blame gets put on the child on top of it if the father comes back home and he's in a bad mood and we haven't done a homework or anything like that it could be any of the hundreds of reasons the parents blame the children that because of you you put father in a bad mood or because of you this bad thing has happened and that again makes us feel like we're not good enough because we're creating such bad instances such bad situations for our own parents another example is when we receive comments on the way we look our body our skin color our height that again makes us feel like we're not good enough now these comments while we're growing up play a huge factor in our life because we don't know any better and we're almost like a sponge which I just told you and our self esteem gets formed by the age of 7 so by that time whatever we've received that becomes our true identity that becomes our personal law that becomes our true belief about ourselves and our self image moving on to the next factor which is our school life so from our homes we start growing up and once we're grown up we leave our homes and we start going to school out there we meet so many new people we meet a teachers who are unhealed people themselves we meet other people coming from different backgrounds we meet a new peer group and out there the number one thing that happens is when a lot of comparison is done about us to other people that makes us feel that we're not good enough then we're constantly being told that only if we behave in a certain manner we sit quietly and we conform to the school rules and discipline are we good enough and naturally kids they're very unique like we've all seen the movie tyra the mean pur and then there've been number of movies about this so you cannot conform each and every child into the discipline or a particular thing and grade his performance on him sitting still for 8 hours constantly during the school time 6 hours 8 hours whatever the time is depending on the place that you're living in so that makes us feel that we're not good enough because we can't follow these particular rules we can't mug up certain things and then if we don't get good grades or we're not excelling in extracurricular activities or we're not excelling in sports it makes us feel like we're not good enough on top of it the shaming bullying and teasing that happens that gives a another hit to our self esteem and naturally with all of these things whenever we're not accepted or whenever we're rejected due to a particular condition we start to feel even worse about ourselves and we start to chase this good self worth outside and the third factor which is the society comes into play and that gives the final nail to the coffin out here on our self esteem so the society always tells us and we anytime we look around the people who are good enough the people who applauded the people who are uh, you know who we look up to are always either they're very good looking or they're very rich or they're very successful or other things they're either very successful at a sport or they've got good grades they've got an amazing job or they look good or they just got a promotion so we naturally start to feel and we start to compare ourselves with other people as well we start to see instagram we start to see everything around of how everyone is building these amazing things out there and i am not doing anything and the path that we see around that people take for them to be good enough and when we see that people are finally applauded and accepted by people or everyone around us is when they become successful in a particular thing and naturally we start to chase an amazing partner a, a you know a trophy wife or a trophy man a trophy husband we want to get married to someone who's rich or someone who's very good looking we want to start earning more money ourselves so that we can finally be and we can finally feel good enough or we want to get jack we want to get those big muscles so that now we can show people that i am good enough and at the same time subconsciously we're also trying to not feel weak out here because of the pain that we've received of all of these growing up experiences in school in society and at our home this becomes a front for us to not get that vulnerable child inside of us to not let him to come out so we're masking all of this pain inside but this pain is so deep down there 
and we keep on finding ourselves in new situations like as soon as the new iphone comes out or the new particular pair of shoes come out anything new comes out we want to buy it instantly because once we buy it we get that kick that yeah now i am good enough oh my god i've got this thing and i'm conforming out here but the iphones are going to come out every year and we get stuck in this constant chase of buying the more expensive thing buying the more expensive car and then going to a jet and just new and new things Whereas at any point in time, we cannot just relax and we cannot address the core pain that we've gone through and the core wound that is there that still gets triggered every time we're rejected or every time we compare ourselves to other people. And that makes our life absolutely hell because we're not living for ourselves. We're not constantly, you know, just relaxing. We're always chasing something else and we can't just sit, breathe, accept ourselves or who we are. And that's where true happiness and fulfillment is always being taken away from us. Moving on to the solution. So firstly is, you've got to break free from the noise of society that is there. You've got to bring in a new level of consciousness, a new level of awareness and start catching yourself when you're comparing yourself to other people or when your thoughts make you believe that you are not good enough because of X, Y, and Z reason and you need this particular thing to finally be good enough. It's great to have aspirations. It's great to move forward, but not coming from a place of lack that I, when I get that thing, I will be good enough, but already feeling amazing before and then going after those things because you want to enhance your life. There's a huge difference between the two things. The same thing, the same iPhone, somebody could get because that's what they want to do. But when we attach a self worth to that, that's where it just feeds the loop again and again and again and again. Meditation will really help you out with this. It will help you be more aware and be more conscious of your thoughts. Catch them, be aware of them, and then change them. Second thing you can do out here is you can start to accept yourself as and how you are. You can start to accept your weight right now as in how you are right now, your habits, wherever you are in life, maybe you're not the most successful person right now. Of course, you're on your way to being that. But just being on that chase every time and being like, I'm going to be happy when, I'm going to be happy when. And even when you receive that, that happiness is very short lived because there's always the next bigger, better thing to achieve. That will constantly make you feel that you're not good enough. So happiness and core acceptance needs to start from right now. We got to start feeling like we're good enough right now and then coming from that space and moving on with life. Number three, remind yourself that you are enough. Remind yourself that you are worthy and not because you have a particular thing or the conditions that you put on yourself, but just because you're a human being. Because worth is something which is very intrinsic, which cannot be increased or cannot be diminished. Who you are is because you're worthy. Just because you exist, your worth is existing out here. And it might be very difficult for you to understand this particular point out here that, bro, how can I be worthy? I said, so everyone is worthy, right? Is everyone worthy right now? Yes, everyone is worthy. Because you're a human being, because you exist out here, you are worthy. Worth does not have to be conditional. If you add these conditions to yourself, it will always going to be a win-lose situation. There's always going to be someone more rich than you, much better looking than you, who will be doing the same thing that you're doing in a much bigger, faster, better way. So that's the road that will lead you to failure and disappointment every time. We've got to get to a place of remind ourselves that I am worthy and I am good enough. And I don't need any of the other things to prove myself with that. Because guess what? There is no one who's asking for proof from you. The only person who's asking for proof from you is you yourself. And you're the only one who's limiting yourself in that thing. Going deeper with it, so these are the things that you can instantly do. Generally what we teach and what uh, we're going to be doing for you to get to a lasting place is connecting with yourself and connecting with those emotions, connecting with those experiences that made you feel all of the pain and when all of that wounding happened. So being aware of your core wound of when that happened and made you feel that you're not, you weren't worthy at that point in time. Now because of that pain, you might have wanted to cry and a lot of emotions come up. Now naturally we're also taught that we cannot show our emotions. So we don't know how to process those emotions as well. We need to feel the pain of that time and we need to process those emotions clearly to really let go of them and to really let them run its course. Only when we've connected with those parts of ourselves, with those pains, those wounds that we're carrying inside, and only when we've processed them clearly, can we move on to healing, can we move on to building that self-worth. Once you connect with those parts, once you, firstly, you've got to be aware of them. Then you've got to connect. Then you've got to release and process all of that stuff. Once you process that, then you can move on to things like more like affirmations, more like reparenting yourself and meeting your needs now. Giving yourself the love that you deserved. Giving yourself the love that you want, that should have been given to you, but there was no one to give it to you. So now we need to give all of those things to ourselves and condition ourselves and reprogram ourselves to take care of ourselves and get to a point of true healing and developing that true self worth. Now in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk a bit more about this and I'm going to tell you how you can do that healing process as well in the upcoming videos. But in the next video, we're going to be talking about school trauma and bullying, which we spoke about out here and how the horrors of school bullying comparison have been affecting us and how 
you can get over that. All right, this is going to be Shitij signing off. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But before that, please put down in the comment section below. Let me know how this video was for you. And let me know what is some other thing that you would want me to talk about as well. And as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, thank it, smash it, demolish it. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.